Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on what is software defined data center. Now we have divided this lecture into two parts. In part one of this lecture, what we will be discussing about why software defined data center, what are the issues and challenges with the traditional hardware centric data center. We will also be discussing how the business models have changed over the past few years. In the second part of this lecture series, we will be discussing about what is software defined data center? What are the key benefits of software defined data center? It's underlying architecture and what makes up a software defined data center. So with that agenda, let's get started. So let's get started with our first topic. Why software defined data center? Now folks who are new to the term data center itself, this is the slide for them. So what is data center? A data center is a centralized physical facility where corporate computers, networks, storage, and other IT equipments are installed to support business operations live. The computers in a data center contain or facilitate business critical applications, services, and data. Now here are the few reference images. So this is the reference image for Google data center. And this is the reference image of Amazon data center. And as you could see that these data centers are huge data center, which can be size of a complete warehouses spanning across multiple geographical locations and serving the business demands. Now, as you could see, the title of the slide says that digital transformation is transforming every business. Now in this particular slide, I would like to talk about how the businesses have evolved in past few years. As an individual consumers, we all are witnessing how digital businesses are thriving. Let's look at a couple of examples like Alibaba. As you could see that Alibaba Group or Amazon, it is the world most valuable retailer, but interestingly, they don't own any inventory. Look at the Airbnb or OYO. They are the world's or India's largest accommodation provider, but interestingly, they don't own any real estate. Look at the Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. They are the, they are the world's most popular media owner, but they don't create any content. Same as Tesla, as, you know, when we talk about Tesla, it is not a car company. We don't see Tesla as a car company. We can say that a Tesla is basically a software which is running on a four wheels. Look at the Uber, look at the Ola. These are the world largest taxi company, but they are not owning any vehicles. So as you could see that, what is their secret? What, what changes? Or, or digital revolution, revolution these companies have brought in and revolutionized the entire business models. And when you go deeper into their secret recipe and their secret recipe is software. They are using software to invent new products, invent new services and new business models consistently with improved efficiency and performance. Now companies like Tesla, Uber, Airbnb, Facebook, Google, now these companies and these business models have set the bar really high for today's consumers. And this digital transformation, what have brought in with these revolutionized business models is continuously driving rapid and fundamental changes in businesses and their operating models. Now these business models are really, chall really uh, challenging traditional operating business models. And that has become a driving model for every single enterprise customer to start shaping up their businesses, their operating operation models. Now, this is the slide which says that this digital revolution is not have impacted one specific uh, sector. If you see this particular slide, it says that your digital revolutionize have impacted every single industry in today's world. Our healthcare, our traditional health, healthcare has got translated or evolved as a mobile health. Our traditional education, classroom-based education has evolved as a massive open online courses like 
Udemy, Edureka, Coursera, etc. A traditional power and utilities plants have been evolved as a smart grids. Manufacturing or traditional manufacturing have evolved as a custom manufacturing. A traditional finance services or banking services have evolved as a mobile banking. And last but not least, our traditional devices are evolving as a IoT devices, making our homes as a smarter homes. Smart watch, smart homes are example of those IoTs. So this is the one of the survey, and this is a slide which which takes say that 85% of data center will be software defined by 2021. So it won't be a wrong thing to say that in short. A software is eating the world. A software is the key, key thing which is sitting at the heart of every digital business in today's world. As an IT team, how does it really matter to us? Or how does it really impact to us as an IT team? Now, when you look at the today's enterprise customers, every single enterprise customer, every single business, is, whether it's a small or whether it's a large business, they are looking for a quicker rollout of their applications, a quicker rollout of their softwares, right? Every single enterprise customer is looking to have a business model, same as Facebook, same as Airbnb, and same as Tesla or Uber. The ability to bring a new applications and services to market quickly is a key to achieve this business success and building a competitive advantage. And that's what every single organization or businesses in today's world are looking for. And to keep up these challenges or these ever increasing demands, the businesses are adopting public and hybrid cloud services because this operating model has a capability to deliver agility and meeting this ever increasing demands. But the question is, how does it affect the ID? Now, these kind of ever increasing demands from a customer, for example, if you look at it, agility. Now, today's environment, every customer want to have their business model as more agile as it, could, it can be. Gone are those days when applications were rolled out once in a year or once in a two year. Now, every single business owner want to roll out their application as quickly as in the market, maybe twice in a week or maybe thrice in a week, or once in a three weeks, sorry. Now at the same point of time, every single organization, every single customer is looking to improve the agility, improve the efficiency, but at the same time, they want to reduce the total cost of ownership. They want to reduce the cost of implementing this infrastructure to support this new increasing demand of this digital revolution. And most importantly, every single enterprise customer at any cost will not want to compromise with the security. So every customer want to have their business model to be agile at the same time to be more efficient, but reducing the cost of ownership, but most importantly, meeting and having those security compliance. So now with these kind of customer put and directly impacts the IT because it puts IT under pressure to respond to the ever increasing demand for the faster innovation. Now companies nowadays expect a more agile that leverages both public and private clouds for faster delivery. Highly dynamic, highly agile, highly available, a programmatic provisioning, IT self-service delivery of network storage and other security services are no longer a business advantage. Every single business owner want to implement all these capabilities, scalability, flexibility, elasticity in their business model as a part of their infrastructure to remain competitive in today's a very competitive business world. So that so that's what and these key demands from IT organizations raise a new raise a Raise a, raise a request, or I would say, raise a demand for a new data center. Raise a demand for a new architecture which can address these demands, what every business is demanding for. Now, in the next topic, we're going to discuss about the challenges with the hardware-centric data center. Why 
facebook amazon google they were able to have this kind of kind of agility in their implementation in their business model but why not every single customer is able to achieve their data center as similar as google amazon facebook what is their challenges what was the road blockers for them so let's go and discuss about it so one of the very fundamental issues with our traditional data center that it increased application complexity now in our traditional data center never design to support the new application architecture what we are seeing it in early days we were having a three tier flat monolithic architecture for application development where we have a a flat monolithic application being installed on a heavy legacy hardware and then basically we are serving a numerous request from that hardware whenever you want to have a more number of request we used to increase the hardware and that's how our traditional hard uh, you know infrastructure was supporting application architecture but in today's world where we talk about dockers we talk about containers we talk about microservices architecture now these microservices architecture have evolved application architecture right every applications now wanted to become a more distributed a more flexible a more elastic in a nature and that's what microservices architecture gives us but the question is do we have a infrastructure is capable enough to support this kind of microservices architecture can we deploy a a large large scale business model in a distributed well distributed fashion with our traditional hardware centric data center and the answer is no the next challenge is deployment agility now in today's world in 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 today's sorry in in if you go 10 years 20 years back we were following like a for a decades we have following waterfall model now what does that waterfall model is basically you get the requirement from a customers you go and create a prototype you develop the code you you get this code for the testing spend one year of time and then basically you deliver this code to the customers after one year of time and when customer look at the product he says that this is not something what i expected it and that's become a bigger bottleneck because you spend one year of time and effort in delivering that product and at the end customer is not happy with it so that is the biggest challenge what we were facing it in the early days right but now today we are in the world of application driven business model application driven infrastructure now application owners are expecting faster deployment from it now that's where we have a ci cd pipeline a continuous integration a continuous development model where basically it develop everything in a self services way now today as a developer if i have a code ready to commit do i have a infrastructure the moment when i commit the code the automatically environment gets ready the automatic infrastructure gets ready required network security storage services gets available to run that code and ship that code to the customer we need that kind of self services automated model do i is our traditional it has those capabilities and those characteristics the answer is no because the traditional it was never designed to have this kind of self services it model so that's the challenge with the with the with the traditional hardware centric data center the another challenge with the traditional hardware centric data center is the security now as we know that security has always been a key criteria for every enterprise customer and and it always be no one wants to compromise with the security right so now we know that hackers have become highly funded nowadays sophisticated they have a hell lot of resources to break the perimeter to break the code good now if you look at this particular example now what it says that all of our traditional hardware centric data centers were having a very high security but that security was lying at the perimeter we were putting a very sophisticated highly optimized security appliances at the perimeter to peri to secure the perimeter of our data center but the question is what if someone breaks into that perimeter some intruder breaks into that perimeter do you have a provision to block the movement of that intruder not at the perimeter level but inside the data center also and the answer is no because it's not feasible to keep a perimeter keep the perimeter firewall at every single place of your data center right and that increase the complexity and make your infrastructure and data center more imagine the scenario something like a castle 
So when we used to see a castle, a castle used to have a large, big perimeter wall made with a very high sustainable rocks. And there's a lot of forces which have deployed along the perimeter. And that's what securing the perimeter and making it, uh, making, making it more protective. But the question is, what if some intruder breaks into your perimeter? Do you have a provision to block the lateral movement of that person who has broken into your perimeter of your castle? And the, the answer is no. So these are the challenges what every organizations were facing it with the traditional business model. And that is the reason these enterprise customers were not able to reach where the Google, Amazon, Facebook, and the other business models were already there. But now in today's world, as we discussed in this digital business revolution, every enterprise customer want to have their data center meeting the, uh, the increased demands. Like you know, every data center want to be more agile, more flexible, and they want to roll out their application at much faster way. So the question here is, how do we achieve this new IT? How every single customer, enterprise customer can have a data center as same as Google, Facebook, Amazon data center. They can have their application rollout. They can have a faster rollout of their applications, reducing their application, like application release cycle from one year to a maybe one month or maybe few weeks. And how do they make this possible? And the answer to all these puzzles is the software defined data center. The software defined data center is optimized for rapid deployment, rapid delivery of all of the application on any device. Software defined data center actually modernize our traditional data center. It addresses all those challenges what we discussed. This software defined data center has a capability to automate your end-to-end -end service delivery, where with the one click, you should be able to get your application rolling and all the self-provisioning of your network storage and other security services just on the one click. And that's who makes it possible, the software-defined data center. This software-defined data center, because of its key characteristics, its, its automated service delivery operation transform the real IT operations and help enterprise customers to make their data center as Facebook, Google, and Amazons are having it. That's what the software defined data center is all about. In a very simplistic word, if we want to simplify a software defined center, data center, it is abstraction. It is another abstraction layer, which is sitting on top of your entire data center stack, pulling the resources, network, compute, storage, pulling these resources, and then basically creating an automated framework to provision these resources in a much automated fashion without any manual intervention. So that's the whole idea of software defined data center. And that is the key of today's data center. Every single enterprise customer, every single business owner is trying to reshape their data center to address this new IT demands. So we hope you, you got the uh, idea about software defined data center. We hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thanks for your time. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for our next lecture.